Ready? Let's do it. All right, well this morning, as you can see, it's super foggy and the spot that we were wanting to go to observe is kind of like a little bit of a wetland marsh. So I'd imagine that's gonna be really foggy, especially at first light. So I don't know how good our chances are of seeing it before the fog lifts, but I think what it might do is just drop Grant off at the spot that we've been observing for up on this knoll. We saw a really nice buck there that had just shed his velvet the other day. And uh, we haven't seen him since, and we've been back a couple times, but I'm gonna drop him off and I'm gonna roll around a little bit, try to find a different buck. You good? Good luck, Jacob. Do your best. Find you a big one. Got a buck spotted. Really nice buck but he's on private. Try to get some footage through my binos, but I don't have a camera with me with any zoom on it. But he's really nice, he's big bodied, he's pretty wide. And he's going towards a property, I don't see any posted signs on it. I can see the whole edge of it, and I don't see any posted signs. In North Dakota, if a land isn't posted, if it doesn't have no trespassing signs or anything around it, you're allowed to go on there and hunt. I'd imagine he's gonna bed down soon, it's getting pretty late in the morning. I want to drive up there and see if I can see him before he disappears over that hill back there. Oh, another nice buck around out on the field. He spooked. When that buck ran in there, he spooked him out. He doesn't know what's going on. Three bucks. There's one little one, two nice ones. I apologize for the shaky footage. I'm just filming with my phone through the binos. I can see him bedded from the road here. I can see his whole head pretty much. He's just bedded here looking back right into the sun, kind of towards the road. He's kind of on the highest point along the edge of this field where he can see out into the canola and towards this road. And he's got the corn and the wind at his back. So if he stays in this buffer strip, the wind's supposed to pick up today to about 15 miles an hour. And I think we could just sneak up that buffer strip and maybe try to shoot him out of his bed. Little one just laid down next to him now. He's kind of going over that hill away from him. I'm on my way back to get you, all right? So you can probably just start heading down towards the road. All right, sounds good. See you in a bit. Yep. Bye. Here comes Jake. Just about back here to get Grant. Looks like he's ready to go. <laughs> he's running. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you okay, dude? What happened? Here's the damage, folks. You okay? Oh, I ate it. Was it worth it? I mean, if it provided entertainment for you, then yeah, it was worth it. <laughs> I think it provided entertainment for a lot of people, probably. Oh, oh god. I was really weighed down by that camera gear. I can you do it clean right now. Watch. With nothing on? With nothing else on? Oh boy. Yeah. Alright, let's start trying to kill this thing. Yeah, I'd hope so. Alright, it's 10 o'clock and I ended up finding some bucks on an unmarked piece of private land and what that means is in North Dakota if the land isn't posted, like they need to have posted signs on the road, you can go in there and you can hunt it. It just feels weird to me, but there's no posted signs on this property. There's one nice buck that's out of velvet, and then there's also a really nice buck that's still in velvet. And Grant had the good camera, so I apologized. All I got of them was uh, some iPhone footage filming through my binoculars, but you can tell exactly what they are, and like they're nice bucks. We've got the perfect wind to try to go in there and make a stock, I think. We ate something, got liquids and liquids. Got some liquids in <laughs> us. <laughs> got some liquids in us. Got some nutrients and some liquids in us. Yep. We're ready to rock. We're gonna head back down here now. We should be set for the day if we need to be. Only issue is gonna be a uh, camera battery at this point. I'd say we we're kind of running off of uh, charging this camera out of the car because we don't have a charger to charge it out of the outlet. So we've kind of been scrambling to 
charge this battery the whole time. I can see that being an issue if we get in there and get close to this thing and we have to wait a long time, but we'll see you when we get up there. We're gonna go, I'll probably just drive by again and see if they're bedded and not slow down or anything and see if they're there. Are they in that brown or in the green? They were just to the right of the brown. I mean, there's pretty good odds that they're like just in this strip. Yeah. You think it's gonna be pretty easy, huh? I'd put it at 65%-ish. I'd say we can just try to walk down and find them for a couple hours and we'll either spook them or see them. And when we do one of those two things, if we spook them, we'll go somewhere else. If we shoot them, we'll party like rock stars. That sound all right? Do you know who owns, or the people that own this property live around here, don't you know? Yeah, they live, but don't get across the road. No, we, we're going to stay right here. We know right where they're at. It's a mile down. Uh -huh. Don't get on his land. He's pretty serious about his he, deer or what? Well, he has hunters come. I see. No, <laughs> we're going to stay right here on this unmarked stuff. Okay. So Real we, nice guy. So we could, uh, if we hit one, we can recover it on his property, which I think we can anyway in this state, but it's nice to talk to him and let him know we're going back in here. So I'm going to finish packing up and start sneaking down the corn here. Ready? Mm -hmm. You want to steal Greg's truck? The keys are right here, folks. Let's run up there, see if we can see where he goes. Just jumped that real nice buck. I think it's that same one Jake saw this morning. Not sure, but he was wide, he was outside the ears. Jake's running up there to try to see if he can get on him. I mean, that was him. That was, he's on the opposite end of the property. But it was for sure him. Like, I can't believe how far away he is. I don't know how far that is, but it's like close to a mile, I bet you. We, I, did, I never saw that velvet buck. But I'm gonna sneak up here and I'll look down this edge. He could be just right back where I first saw him, somewhere up there. stood up right next to that little buck. It's not the one that we spooked, but it's the velvet eight pointer. I guess a nine pointer that was with the big group. Spooked the big one. The other big one's still out there. He's in the canoa right now, but we gotta wait till it gets to the buffer up here so we can sneak up there. I'm hoping he comes to this edge. Our wind is going that way. So we can't really get within range of him right now. Well, we we're just sneaking up here to look around this corner to see if we could get eyes back on that hard antlered buck. And when I got up on this rock pile behind me, I could look down in that canola and I could see that little buck that was up by the road and the same buck that was with that hard antlered buck this morning. And we were sitting there glassing that little buck and all of a sudden he must have got too close to that bigger one and made him stand up. And it's not the hard antlered buck, but it's that velvet buck that was with him this morning. And we think he bedded back down out there. He stood up and we could just see his antlers and now he disappeared again. Our wind is blowing straight south out into the field, and he's off to our east, so I think we should be good. And looking at the hourly forecast for today, it's supposed to switch to the southeast, which will be blowing even more away from that buck. So me and Graham have been talking about it, and we think we might stay here the whole day pretty much until 
we either kill him or spook him because like we know exactly where he's at. He's within 100 yards of us, 80 yards of us. We got food and water in the car, but we didn't bring it with us, so I might have Grant run back and get that, and I'll just stay here, see if he gets back up. He's got up at 1 o'clock, so I'm, I'd imagine he'll get up again throughout the day. You want to run back and get that stuff? Yeah. Got the stuff? I come bearing gifts. <laughs> we could maybe stay till tomorrow morning. Bottle for you. Thank you. Guys, we're out here in just the blistering heat. We're thirsty. We're hungry. And all we have to eat are like these little crickets. But it's seven grams of protein per one. So like, I think we should be all right for the night. <laughs> How is it? Not bad. Okay. Wind just started to pick up quite a bit. Buck got up on his feet. I don't know if that's by coincidence or if that had something to do with it, but he's walking quite a bit. Maybe uh, get ready here, but just make sure you're going to have enough cover if he does come in. Yeah, he's going to come out. Yeah, he's still coming. He's just moving real slow. It's like 2.50 and he just got up and was feeding along the edge of the corn. He walked about 20, 30 yards our way. He was just following the edge. I thought he might just come up and walk right down the edge. But he eventually went back out in the canola. I'd imagine he's gonna bed back down. It's still really early. I think for the sake of footage and for the sake of killing him, we're both gonna move up. Grant's gonna get in the corn. And then I'm going to be sitting right next to Grant, probably, or maybe up a little bit in front of him. He's been back in here all day, hasn't been messed with. He's been on his feet a bunch of times, so he should feel comfortable. As long as our wind doesn't swirl and kick towards him a little bit, I think we might get a chance at him. Of course, it's all got to be thistles out here. Go down, baby. Go down. Yep. Yep. Jeez. Okay. 
Be, be, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. I mean, I think he's down. I had to make a good shot, but... Oh my gosh, dude. Let's just stay up, stay up so we can see him if he gets out. You think we hit him well? I can see it right behind the crease when he ran away. I thought I couldn't tell. And I shot through some grass, but he was so close. And like... Oh my gosh. Something so really close. bad would have had to happen for me not to hit him perfect, because I was going like this, yeah. trying to get some grass off the bow. And like, my pin was still just covering his vitals. I saw him do a big jump and tumble. You see that? Yeah, he was not well out there. I yeah. think he's dead. I do too. You see him look at me right then yeah. before he came out? Yeah. <sighs> I wasn't shaking at all when I shot him, but now I can't stop. Oh. He did exactly what I thought he was going to do. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Dude, I was able to do, I, know, I couldn't believe how much I was able to move even when he was close, you know. I just kept jockeying back and forth. Because he was just zigzagging. I didn't know where to go. <laughs> Dude. Oh my God. Thank you, Grant. Thanks for sticking it out with me. <laughs> oh my God. Would have been a lot harder to sit here all day by myself. That was a blast. Yeah. We literally hunted that buck all day. Yeah, I mean, from this morning. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, I did see him right away. Out on him. <laughs> 726. 726. Yep. So we sat there. We hunted that deer for seven and a half hours. Yeah. <laughs> it's so crazy that they bet out there and put themselves at that disadvantage, you know? And I mean, that's that's why this is such a good spot to hunt. I mean, I know we were hunting those bucks in that other spot, but that's such a tough spot to get them in. Like, that buck is in such a good bed. I gotta catch, I gotta catch my bed. Dude, you wouldn't believe the freaking batteries. Out. I switched the battery again. Is it still rolling? It's rolling now. Yes. The reason, like, we're so ill prepared for this is we went out this morning just for like a observation sit yeah we've just been sitting up on this knoll just like pretty much relaxing hoping to see a buck and that, i mean we've just been sitting up to glass and eating breakfast we drinking. started the morning with two percent battery how far was he when you shot maybe 10 yards yeah i have no idea it was hard where to tell was back here but he looked like you're in the same frame and you're the same size <laughs> I mean, yeah it's gotta be sick like right next to each other but the reason that we thought he was for sure going to come back to this corner is because he's been eating on this dry canola all day. I mean, we figured he had to come back up here, and that's probably the reason that he came up here midday, is just to come to this green corn and get some actual moisture. There's not a lot of moisture in that stuff, and there's no water around us. I mean, I don't think he can sit on that. I don't think he can sit out there and eat that stuff all day, especially with it being this warm without having to get something with some moisture in it. I guess that was just our thought process. Whether that's right or not, I don't really care anymore. <laughs> But it was so cool from my perspective because oh I was just sitting down and I mean, I'll, I would just get high enough where I could see the tips of an ant his antlers and I knew like he can't see me. You could barely see his head all day. Yeah. And like from this position, I just like, I drew my bow when he was, when I seemed like he was committed to come out and I just pinned it against the ground so mm -hmm. it was low and not glaring. And then when he came out and I knew like that he was, if I popped up, I could shoot him. I, like I knew it was clear. That's when I popped up real slow and he turned away. Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe that because he was kind of staring towards me. And I mean, I, I know he didn't. Had you pegged I did too. I was just like, oh, this is it. I'm going to have one at 10 yards. I'm not going to shot again. And like, I'm just sitting here. Please don't do it. Please don't do it. And finally, like, he's, I could hear his hoofs hitting the ground. He was so close to me. Mm -hmm. And he's so loud in that canola. Dude, the sound of your arrow leaving the bow and hitting him it was like it was the different. same sound. It was different. Because it, it was just shoulder blade. Right into him. And that's what everybody talked about. Was, they said it like a. When you hit a deer, it's not going to sound the same as what you're used to with those single bevel broadheads and a heavy arrow setup, just because they're so efficient, I guess. I don't know it. I mean, that's my first time using them, but I like them so far. <laughs> hey, here's where I was sitting. And like, he was straight that way, and he kept just weaving back and forth. And like, I was just like, I would take like three steps back, three steps forward, and then I realized like that it. When he got like 10 yards away, he started angling that way. So I got down and then that's when he looked at me and I'm like, oh geez. But then I realized like, oh, all I can see is the tip of his antlers. He doesn't see me. Like maybe the wind swirled a little bit or something, but he doesn't see me. He started walking again. So I just got low, drew my bow straight down towards the ground and then I just pinned it. And as soon as he got right here, I rose up and he looked the other way. As soon as I started rising, I couldn't believe it. I thought he was looking at me. But then I looked at him and I realized he's looking the opposite way. I, I had some, I, th I think I might have this on the, my bottom cam. So I just kind of lifted it up. And he must have been somewhere right in there. That felt good.
go see if we can find that thing. The arrow. Yeah, that could have been it. I suppose it is. I never saw it sticking out of him as he was running away, so. Mm -hmm. I thought I could see a little hole just like perfect beyond the shoulder, it looked like. All right, well, can't find my arrow, but we found blood. I wanted to do that before it got dark out just because it would be really tough to go out there and find blood in the dark. It's just so monotonous out there. So we got it marked where we think he went into the field and I got first blood marked out in the field. So I'm gonna bring this back to show the guys. I don't know where my arrow went exactly. I don't know if it stayed in him for a little bit or if it just went way through him, but maybe we'll come back and look for that tomorrow. But we're gonna head back to the camp and let the guys know the good news. Warp's calling back. Hello? What the heck? I was, I was gonna ask you if how long we're staying because there's there was a little buck that came by, but I ended up not shooting him. No, you did not. I got your Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's down, we think. Yeah. Yeah. He never left the field, and we both think we saw him fall, so should be good. Did he come out to that buffer strip? Yep. Shot him at 10 yards. Y'all. Holy cow, you're kidding me. Oh, yeah. Well, no, we're not kidding. All right. We'll see you back there in a little bit. Yes, sir. It's an all-day sit. Yeah. Awesome, guys. <laughs> Seven hours on so at least. That was exhausting. <laughs> fun, though. Really fun. We were sitting there eating sub sandwiches while this deer is bedded <laughs> 80 yards from us. I think so. Be careful, my legs are tired. <laughs> I haven't seen the footage, but it should be pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> it's cool. We got a lot. We had a lot of time to think about. We this had segment. an awful day, so like. <laughs> When you, when I would I have had your... a really awful day if we didn't get him. I, I am not. I'm pretty tired. <laughs> it was Are stressful. Pretty dehydrated. We got three dead cameras and a dead buck. Yep. <laughs> and a whole lot of footage. There's plenty of brush for you to hide oh, in. Oh my eh? word! He looks like he's right on top of you. Whoa! Holy cow! He's toast right there. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> that's insane. Yeah. That's that's flipping insane. Let's go get him. Let's go get him. Ready? You think he's just laying back there? You're going to bring the deer cart? Yep. Take me to my buck. Is it easy? No. No? All right. Well, we were at the scene of the crime. Shed's right behind us. Shot the buck up this buffer strip here, but we're gonna go up where we marked the last blood, just have a couple of us go through the field and then the rest of them are gonna meet us up by the edge up there. And that was first blood there. Uh, we didn't really go much further than that, so we gotta start looking now, I guess. Try over here more, isn't it? Well, we're kind of on a straight line here. See it back there. This one here. Well, we struggled at first, but it seems like he's kind of opening up now. There is a bunch of deer sign, like closer to the edge of that cornfield up there, but now there's less deer trails and stuff, and you can kind of see where he broke off. Like some of this fresher stuff that's broke off in the canola when he was running through it, finding a little higher uh, volume of blood. Okay, tough guy. You got the hot hand. Some up here. Some right here. Dead buck right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Man. Nice. He's bigger than I thought. <laughs> He's bigger he really than I I mean, it's funny because we just sat there and watched him bike seven or eight hours today. Like, yeah, that's a really nice buck. 
I just yeah, kept... he's big. That is substantial. <laughs> yep, that's a substantial animal. Yeah, eye level at 10 yards. I mean, <laughs> yeah, was, the hunt, I don't, crazy. like, it could have been, he could have been way smaller, and just the hunt itself was awesome. I got a kick out of you saying, I shot, I shot up at him. <laughs> yeah. He was that close. And he's a good one, as Aaron would say. Let's go show those guys. Yep. <laughs> Don't give up. Oh, <laughs> Holy there cow, he is, oh, dude. <laughs> he's nicer than I thought he was. <laughs> oh my god. Dude. Yeah, he's a good one. That thing is huge. Yeah, let's flip him over. I'm interested to see. Nice. Holy cow, dude. Just a little canola seed. The canola buck. This boy right there. Yeah, I put it on his shoulder. Yep. Because he was quartered to you just a hair? I think he was just a little yeah. bit. Yep. Put it right on the point of his shoulder. I was aiming at the back offside leg or whatever. That single bevel rotated. You see that? Uh-huh. That's pretty cool. Uh-huh. Bud was hard to find at first, and he opened up. That's kind of what they say about the single bevels, though. Yeah, it? just fixed blades in general, I think. Watch his head there. Just not going to get over. the blood trails that you do with an expandable, but you don't have to worry about shooting where I shot him. That's a beautiful buck. Yeah, it is. Holy cow. Got nice looking brow tines on him. I like how this one curls. You see, did you notice the curvature of that one? Uh-huh. You see these little nice. guys down here? These little cheater points? Yeah, I saw that. I yeah. Mean, open ground like this. And obviously these deer aren't as pressured as some areas of the country but like you know that they're we've, we've observed it enough in the past where they're getting up throughout the day and they're moving he was only moving 10 20 yards so he would only be up on his feet for 30 seconds to maybe a two three minutes and then the time that he got up and went to the corn that was maybe a 20 minute ordeal but that's something we noticed early on too is when we were back by that shed mm -hmm. he never once looked back in that secluded corner that's true yep. he was always facing the road yep never yeah. never looked back towards you and there's you can't see this little corner from back here but there's two roads up that way and he was always either looking down that way or looking up that way and this little pocket back in here is low enough where you can't see him from the road either. That's another thing I was going to mention is that's where we keep finding these mature bucks that's on this trip we is they're in these little holes mm -hmm. where you can't see them from a road. And this is another one of those deals where there's no trees. I mean, we started the trip off scouting and we bumped those three little bucks out of a canola field. And Dylan filmed them out of the back window there of the truck. And they were just in one little low spot in the field where like some ragweed and yep. some stuff like what's growing in this buffer strip was mixed in with that canola and it was just barely over the rise where it was out of view from the road mm -hmm. yeah and there's not much topography here but it's enough for him to like yep. i watched him come over this hill he was the first buck over this hill this morning the other two kind of floated around up there but he was the first one back in here as soon as he uh realized that there was some vehicle traffic going on he headed over the hill it's interesting to get to watch them like that, man. Yeah, it's, they just we're pretty they lucky. Like that was pretty. That was an awesome yeah. day. Like that was a lot of fun. I definitely learned a lot just about how they move in the daytime. Mm -hmm. you know? Got to get in that bubble yeah. with them. Yeah, that's I mean we thing. were inside 80 yards all day. I'd yeah, say. Yeah. But that's like that other big buck that we were that we've been hunting uh -huh. for the last week. But he was this one was just in a better spot to kill him. Yeah, but. It's just fun to get tight to mature bucks in mm -hmm. their beds and watch them like that. That's the coolest part and of like it for me, is just observing them. We mentioned before, too, it was like we learned from the mistake that we thought that we made the day before. When right. you guys watched that buck go to bed. We should have never left. We and have... we left for a little bit, but like w the reason we left is because we needed food and water like mm -hmm. so we could come back out here and spend the day if we needed to. And like that, that's... But you guys came back mm -hmm. immediately once you did that. Yep. And he might have been, that buck might have been on his feet three, four times by then based yep. off what we observed today. That's right. North Dakota's a pretty cool state. Yeah, Grant, a... Grant and I have been getting pretty lucky. We got to see mule deer, moose, elk, whitetail. Yeah, everybody's got to see elk with me and Dylan. <laughs> and here elk, Greg and Mindy filmed one of them. There's all kinds of stuff up here. There's all kinds of hunting opportunities mm -hmm. also. You know, it's starting this early in the year. It's one of the few states that opens. Yep when you can come and hunt them in velvet. And there's also a lot of different types of land that you can hunt. There's that pots land. We ended up hunting Plots. Out. That's what I said, isn't it? 
Oh, I thought you said pots. pots. You did. And there's also a lot of different types of properties that you can hunt. There's the plots land. We were hunting like a school-owned property that we had to call and make sure we could hunt on. Yep. And then obviously in North Dakota, you're allowed to hunt if the land is not posted. Yep. So there's just endless opportunities out here for you to find deer to hunt. And as far as the early season hunt goes, like we went to Kentucky last year and like it was fun. We shot some bucks, but coming up here where the weather's nice and cool, ticks aren't all over, yep. you're not stepping on copperheads like this. This was a lot of fun. It was very enjoyable. I guess yeah. I never really, really considered moose, like going it, going up onto a hill and watching moose and whitetail all down right. in the same area. <laughs> and then muleys on the other side. Maybe in a dream. I got to go to sit on that hill. Yeah. yeah, it's an awesome place, man. This has been a really fun trip. That's cool. Let's get him on the cart and pull him out, man. Yes, sir. Awesome. Except they got like three more today on me. <laughs> <laughs> we got one though. That's, That's right. good. We can get one for every seven. That's all right. <laughs> Oh. You guys gotta be up in a couple hours.